for later. We put a gray ground on because it really helps us get a nice wide value of values in our portrait. So if we put a medium gray down first, then we can add more charcoal and we can pull it away pretty easily. So this is how we put a ground on our paper. We take our, the side of our charcoal and we just start going in circles. You guys aren't going to do this yet, you're just watching. I'm not putting it on too heavy or too thick. We're just like spread your circles around. Yeah. One more minute. I am thinking of that one. Okay, I need you to stay quiet because I'm going to be continuing to talk. And if you're talking, it makes it really hard for everybody to hear. Okay, so now that I have this little gray ground on there, I'm going to take a piece of paper towel and I'm going to fold it up into kind of a square shape. You could do it with this, but it would take forever, so I don't recommend that. So I get a nice little square shape and I kind of like fold it into my hands here. And then I hold my paper down and then I just do the same thing I did before. I just go in circles. And this is kind of like grinding the charcoal into the paper. I'm glad you guys are impressed by this. <laughs> that makes my job easier. <laughs> okay. Now, don't worry about all of these little dots and like the variations in the texture. That's okay. You're going to add more charcoal and pull some away, so those won't really matter. All right, the next step is we're going to figure out where the center of our portrait is. Now, I can make a decision. This is a pretty complicated Frida Kahlo painting. She's got a chihuahua here and what looks like a Mexican, a maybe an Aztec sc a sculpture, possibly, and a monkey. So I can keep it simple and I want to just do her face. Or I really like all these things, so I'm going to be ambitious. Here's an example of going above and beyond the objective for your engagement grade, right? I could just do her face, or I could feel ambitious and do all of this. It's really up to you. She has a unibrow because that is a, that is a Frida Kahlo trademark because she is representing herself as an unmanicured person. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right, so we're going to find the center of her of this whole portrait. We're going to put a cross. So culturally, Frida Kahlo was part of her heritage to have very thick eyebrows and not groom them like we do now, like some people do now. So she did not groom them, and therefore she represented herself as is, and she should be. She is very proud of her her image, and we should definitely not be making fun of it. Okay? You can ask questions about it, but we're not going to be making fun of it. Okay? Because it's part of her cultural heritage. I'm kind of confused whether she is a boy or a girl. So actually, she's, she's a woman, but she actually did dress very androgynously uh, um, often. You see photographs of her dressed in suits, like her dad's suits and stuff. Um, and sometimes she looks in her paintings looks more masculine and sometimes she looks more feminine because she preferred to represent herself in both ways and that is okay and sometimes yeah yeah okay so we're gonna carry on here and I'm gonna put a cross here because that's the center of the paper and I'm sizing this up for this paper so I need to figure out, well, where am I putting this inside my paper? 
So now I have a cross in the middle of my paper. Okay? Let me move this up so you can see the whole thing. All right, so now I'm going to draw an egg shape. This is going to be a generic egg shape because I'm not going to deal with specifics yet. I'm just trying to place her face in my picture plane. Okay? Now her head is turned to the side. So if I were drawing someone that's looking straight forward, which some of you are, I would put the line down the middle of the face. But because her head is turned to the side, the middle of her face is not in the middle of the egg. It's off to the side. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and put that line there. Now the next line that confuses everybody all the time is I'm going to put the eyes in the middle of this egg. But you might say, but her eyes are like up top here. Well, we can't forget the fact that she has all this hair and the top of her head is underneath the hair. So actually when we make that head shape, her eyes are right in the middle because the top of her head, if she were bald, is up here. Okay, so that means her eyes go right about here. So we draw that line in. And then one third of the way down, we draw a nose line. And then another third, we draw the mouth line. Okay, so now typically proportionally, we have five eyes in, along the side of a head. So like if we were drawing a portrait that was straight on, we have the middle line and the middle line and we have one, two, three, four, five eyes. So that kind of helps us with the size of these two eyes. So we don't make them too big, right? But because she's looking sideways, we're going to have one, two, three, four, and then like a half eye here. Because she's looking sideways. So this is kind of where this eye is, and this is kind of where this eye is. And then we can even blend these out because we don't need these anymore. But it helps us to make sure the eyes not too big. Okay? And then the nose, we see the side of her nose kind of come up here, and then we see her eyebrows way up here. And then we see her mouth right about here. So that's how you start. It doesn't look anything like her yet because we're just placing the features where they need to go. That's step one. We're not going to do any details. It's a waste of time to do details because I might come by and say, you know what, that eye is in the wrong place. Erase it and move it. So if you just sat there and spent 45 minutes on that eye, you're wasting your time. Okay? You really have to put things where they go before you give it any detail. All right. So the next thing I would do is kind of map out like where her neck would come out. I want everyone to do this for a second. Put your finger on the top of your ear and on the earlobe bottom and then run it to the front of the face. Your ear is as big as your nose to your eyebrows. Our ears are a lot bigger than we think they are. Okay, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna draw a line here. I'm gonna draw a line here. And I'm going to line it up. Her head is tilted a little bit this way, so that's going to change it a bit. But her ear kind of comes out right here and kind of comes down and touches her mouth. It's actually lower because her head is tilted. So you have to pay attention to that too. If, her head, if their heads are tilted, that's going to change the placement of the ear. So here's a general ear, and then we have the neck that comes out here. Okay, and then we're, these are just basic sketchy lines to help us figure out where things go. All right, and then she's got this hairline, which sits about right here. And cuts in this way, and there's some stuff here, and then it comes down this way. And then make the hair big. Okay, don't make the hair flat. Give that person hair. Volume. Hair has volume. You guys are so easy to impress. So it's you guys will be 
you'll get there. Okay, now I'm going to map out where these animals are because I want to get them in there. So his head's right about here, and then his little nose, his little like snout, and then there's like an ear right here, and an ear right here, and then his body kind of comes down like this, and then his little legs. And then she's got like the sweater thing, and the fuzzy thing here. And then we got Mr. Monkey, who's going to kind of be cut off a bit. He doesn't quite fit on the page here, but his eye is there. And now for his nose. And then we got Mr. Aztec statue here. So she put this in here because it's part of her cultural heritage. Aztec's Mexican cultural heritage. So that's why that's there. And that's that's a very like gestural representation of an Aztec figure. They're, pr they're usually pretty like stiff looking. Okay. And then if I wanted to get super detailed, I could do some ribbons and I could put her name up here. There's a nail here. Okay. No, that's not done at all, you guys. That's just mapping it out. Okay. So I'm not going to show you any further steps because that's you won't even get to the ground, probably finishing the ground and a little bit of the egg today. Uh, because I also have to print out your pictures. <laughs> And I don't have the internet. Let's see if it's back. Yay, it's back. Yay. Okay, so what I would like you to do, I'm going to give you a free 10 minutes to have fun and, and surf the internet while I print your pictures. Come up here. I have questions. And noise, Aiden. Aiden, you got to keep the noise monitor thing going, okay? What? Oh my gosh, okay, can you go to the nurse? Just go down to the nurse and make sure that you're all cleaned up, okay? Oh, the nurse is in the front office, okay? Um, unless you want to play around on it or do homework or something for the next 10 minutes. I can't hear you.